All right. In this video, we're going to take a look at different ways that you can set up characters with light. And uh, is that how you can set up tokens with light for characters to see. We're going to start with typical fantasy light sources. Torches and campfires. And all these examples I'm going to use, or most of them anyway, I'm getting off the Roll20 wiki. And I'll include a link to that in the description of the page. So, to start, say this character is just holding a torch. The typical torch in D&D has a radius of 60 feet, starts dimming at 30 feet, provides light in a 360 degree arc. All players can see that light, because it's fire, and since this is a character, they have sight. And we want that multiplier to be 1. I was playing around, and I, I, uh, we'll get into that in a minute. But for a regular character, that is not an elf, not a special being, or whatever, that just has a torch, 60 foot radius, dims at 30 feet, has the light that light has a radius of 360 degrees all players can see the light that that torch emits and the, since this is a character that is not blind they have sight so they can also see the light that this emits and a 360 degree arc and a multiplier of times one so in the gm mode you get a pretty good idea of what the character can see but if you want to see exactly how a player would see it make sure you click on the token then you can hit control and L and that'll put you into a player mode where you can see things exactly the way a player would see them and then if you just click off the token it puts you back in the GM mode now you see down here in this cave I've set up a little campfire and all I did to get that token was I just went up here I went up to the uh, image tab did a search for campfire just found a free one from the web and threw it down for this example and now because it's a campfire I gave it a radius of 30 feet dims at 15 feet emits its light in a 360 degree arc all players can see the light and since it is not a player character or, or something that can see it does not have sight so it cannot see the light it emits save changes now let's go back to him let's say he doesn't have a torch let's say he's uh, like an elf that has um, night vision or whatever let's see according to the wiki to simulate dark vision We'll give him a radius of 60 feet that starts to dim at negative 5 feet. Since other players can't see the his dark vision, they can't see through his eyes, you uncheck all players see light. And since he can see, you leave his has sight fine. So now we click on him, if we hit control L, this is how the world looks to this elf. Everything is a little dark, it's a little shadowy, till you come into this cavern and there's a campfire. And then once he's in the radius of the campfire, he's using the campfire's light to see. All right. Now, what if this wasn't a campfire? Let's click off him. What if this was a candle? Say you're you're in a, a castle or, or whatever, and it's a candle. It would have a radius of two and emit a radius of zero. All players can see that light. And let's take off. that if we hit control L oops control L he actually can't see anything that candle is too far away for him to see if we put him next to it and hit control L as you see it barely emits any light now you could actually give the player say the player is holding that candle uh, what did I say the candle is too 
start dimming at zero. All players can see the light, obviously. And then he can roam around by candlelight. All right. Now this next one is one of my favorites. Although we're gonna do one of we're gonna do something else first. What if this character has? What if he has no light source, but he has he has some sort of supervision, uh, like maybe dark elves or cats or or something that amplifies normal light. Let's say light to him is two times stronger than a normal human being. So that's going to amplify if we go to... And you're not going to be able to see this in the GM panel. You're going to have to see it in the control L screen. See that, that candle to him... Let's put this back to regular campfire. We'll do 30... Or 60, uh, 30 and 15. So see how it goes out to here before it starts dimming? If we go to him and hit control L... See, the light radius doubles because we've set, for him, he is twice as sensitive to light as other characters. I wonder if that works in reverse. I wonder if you can do a negative multiplier, like 0.5, to make him... Yep, so you can actually even... Say they're, they're, they have... Uh, some sort of mild blindness. You can actually, or 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 whatever, you can actually make them so that light doesn't count as much as it does for other players. So that's a really neat use of that multiplier for certain special types of races. Um, now we're going to look at something that I think is super neat, and I think it'll work really well in like a Call of Cthulhu campaign uh, or even in a fantasy campaign if they have like a hooded lantern or something. <clears throat> Excuse me. So let's see. Let's say he has a lantern that issues light in the 30 foot uh, out to 30 feet starts dimming at 15 feet. However, because it's a hooded lantern, it's only going to emit light in, let's say, a 40 degree angle. Now all players can see that light, and he has sight. So we're gonna hit Control L to see things from his perspective. Now, as you can see, it's just emitting, and you could actually even go narrower than that if you really wanna do like 25. And let's turn off the campfire. So he all he has is his hooded lantern. And it's showing him that 25 degree arc. So how can you get him to see around him? When you click on a token, you're going to see all the things to distort here. Players probably won't see that. All they're going to see is this little, this little hovering box above the token. They can click on that and drag it around. And it's like scanning the area with a flashlight. And I think that is just super neat. Well, those are my dogs playing in the background. So if we put this back to a torch. Um, and that's really all I can think of for, for ways of... And they, uh, like we've gone over like candles, flashlights. Hold on a second. Hey! No. Play in another room. They sound like they're killing themselves. They are not. They are playing. Uh, we've gone over... Super senses. Uh, there, there's just a number of different ways you can do things in this game. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I think all of it is just phenomenal. As you can see, I'll have to, we have a broken line there. So let's take a look at our dynamic lighting layer. 
say we were using this to troubleshoot. So I didn't quite block that. So let's go back to, we'll go to our polygon tool, select our red wall color. We'll click here and then over here, finalize, and that takes care of the problem. Go back to our token layer. We can hit Control L to go back to player site. Tool around a little bit. Oh, we can see I've got a couple of other. So we can go to the polygon tool on the dynamic lighting layer. Select our red wall. Click here. Oops. Here. And here and finalize. Click here and then there and finalize. Click here and then here and finalize. And now you can see we've plugged up those little holes. Well, calm down a little bit. Yoda. I have a Pomeranian named Yoda and he gets all worked up and Pomeranians have this thing called collapsing trachea and it makes it a little hard for him to breathe. All right. But anyway, I think that about covers everything we I wanted to cover in the light source tutorial for Roll20. It was a little longer than I was hoping, but uh, there's just a ton of options. And uh, look, take a look at that wiki page I'll put in the description. They, they, they go into a lot more detail about some things, but I think the things we covered will suit for most campaigns, at least for, our, for the campaigns that my group's running. Uh, so, hope that helped you out. Thank you.